So it's a beautiful, crisp night here in the Eastern Sierras. We're in the Alabama Hills. My buddy Jason and I were here, and while we were hoping for beautiful sunsets and sunrises, what we actually got was just crystal clear skies, not a cloud in the sky. It works out though, because there's so much beautiful night photography to be had here. We have very dark skies here in the Eastern Sierras, and we're making use of that. So. Back behind me we have this creepy looking skull arch. We're in the Alabama hills and we are having a great time light painting this particular arch. So the reason I'm light painting it is because there is just, it is such a dark foreground here. There is zero light pollution to illuminate anything and rather than doing a twilight blend I elected to do a light painted frame blend. So I'm adding multiple light painted frames to give the foreground some depth, dimension, and detail at a lower ISO. And I'm blending that with a higher ISO sky and shot several different compositions and they look like this. What a beautiful thing to wake up to. Again, we had no clouds this morning, but we did have beautiful alpine glow back on the mountains. Shot a little time lapse of it, made some coffee. Now I think we're gonna go grab some breakfast. Just roughing it out here in the wild. <laughs>
So because we had no clouds today, I decided to abandon the Alabama hills and go somewhere where I knew that we could get good photos regardless of what the sky was doing. So we came here. This is Eureka Dunes in Death Valley National Park. And it is incredible. The direct light raking across the sand dunes just makes this place absolutely come to life. So this first composition I'm working on is a wide angle shot. I'm going to wait until the light is a little bit more directional and we get a little bit more shadow in the sand dunes, but the basic composition is the same. I have my favorite peak in the background and then all of these beautiful rolling textures leading back to it. And once the light gets a little bit lower, we're going to retake this shot. I'm going to eliminate that sky and the final result is going to look like this. Shooting in sand dunes like this can be really challenging. It's really challenging to get around. And you also have to always kind of keep in mind where you think you might be shooting so you don't walk through any potential composition. So you kind of have to sneak up on things. So currently I'm thinking I want to be shooting this direction. The sun is going to continue to set in this direction, which means that we're going to get nice side light on all of these dunes back here. So now that the sun's getting a little bit lower, we're getting these beautiful shadows being cast across these sand dunes. And it is so much fun to break out the telephoto lens and just zoom in on various patterns and textures and shadows and shapes that are being created in these, in these dunes. So compositionally, it's kind of challenging. It's very abstract. It's very different than what I typically do, but as a general rule of thumb, what I'm looking for compositionally is that I'm looking for a dark background because I want that sand that's catching the light to be the brightest thing. So I'm using that mountain in the background as my backdrop. It's part of why we climbed up high into these dunes. The other thing that I'm looking for is I'm looking for shadow. The, the shadows in these dunes are what creates all of the interest, all of the beautiful play of you know, light and shadow. That's kind of the theme of these type of photos. It is just so cool to watch this place come alive as that sun gets lower and lower on the horizon. So I've just been wandering around a little bit, letting the sun get lower, and as the sun gets lower, it reveals different compositions. So I've kind of wandered around a little bit and I've found a composition I really like, I think. I'll let you guys be the judge. Check this out. So this composition to me is all about those diagonal zigzag lines. I just love the way that we have these kind of zigzaggy lines leading back to one of the more prominent triangular shaped peaks and as the light gets lower those shadows get more and more pronounced and i think i really like this i'm shooting this frame at right at 100 millimeters i have a circular polarizer on just trying to make the mountains in the background as dark as i can and i'm doing a two shot focus stack to make sure that everything is sharp from front to back final result looks like this mm -hmm. 